The story begins with the protagonist talking about a crappy game that's not fun at all but has absurd difficulty and that's the virtual reality game Tower of Tests. And when it was released, many Korean players came to conquer the game, the famous overnight flippers who wanted to complete the game quickly. So, they dove in for the conquest and kept at it for over a year without eating or sleeping. What are those guys now? Just skin and bones? Looking like Gollum from My Precious. And so, three years passed, and they started giving up on the game, saying that the Tower of Tests was impossible. Because besides having a practically invincible guardian, the guys would die in less than an hour in the Ice Age. And there was also an impossible maze with over 10,000 kilometers to walk. The guys who played this don't even have a life anymore, it's practically torture to play this thing. And with that, everyone backed off, and the game started to decline until it reached the brink of bankruptcy. And despite all this drama, there were still some sadists, I mean, pro players, who hadn't given up on challenging this game. And our protagonist is one of them. A system screen said he conquered floor 50 and was the first person to complete the tower of tests. And this is our son, I mean, Jin Hyuk, he finally completed the entire game after dedicating 11 years of his life to it. In those years, at least it seems like he ate differently from the others. He complained because he should have streamed the completion live, so he decides to upload the video on YouTube. The system thanked him for playing the game so far and talked about a scheduled update reboot to happen in 12 hours, so he should keep enjoying the game after the update. That got Jin Hyuk thinking, a bankrupt game like this having money for updates, but now he plans to quit his job as a YouTuber and streamer to move on with his life. He's almost 30 and still only earns $500 a month. The protagonist's setup had four screens and a bunch of junk underneath, he remembered people saying he should become a professional fighter, but for now, money is more important. Then the protagonist starts alive, eating, doing that broke mukbang. And just take a look at the names of the guys commenting, because why eat once when you can eat forever, chicken one, chicken two. So he starts getting serious, hey guys, there's something I need to tell you, parrot with a rabbit photo, I don't like it. But right away, he gives up on making the farewell announcement and leaves it for tomorrow. So he turns over three bottles, and from what I've researched here, this is a rice alcoholic beverage. Cheers to rice. Then he gives up on sleeping and goes to upload the video of completing the game on YouTube. The Tower of Tests became reality, 331,000 people watching. He goes live and starts showing that a tower suddenly grew all over the world, and from what they reported, it's from the game called Tower of Tests. At this moment, a system screen appears, Tower of Tests updated version, update 1 complete. Folks, please complete the next floor of the tower in 90 days, and if you fail, humanity will be destroyed. The acceptance of reality was severely heightened, and as the guy who played this for 11 years and now it's become reality, our protagonist can't stand still. So he puts on a jacket and rushes out, skipping stairs, to go to the place where he can get that item. The central city is full of desperate people running, saying that tower also appeared in other countries. So it wasn't just here, and there was no way to escape outside. As he reached the underground mall, there were already many people who were probably players and knew what's around here. And that's why they're all suspicious. At this point, a crazy guy comes from behind talking to Jin Hyuk, and this is a popular streamer with over 500,000 subscribers. He comes wanting to take advantage of the protagonist, asking how far he got and asking for information, since they're colleagues in quotes, because his company deceived streamers into signing slavery contracts that only caused losses for them. And because of that, the protagonist's friends left the streamer industry. He came praising the protagonist's lives, but he arrives giving him a headbutt to the face that makes water come out with blood because here we are cold and calculating. Now everything starts to shine, and the mangrove of greed appears, which is a tree with fruits, and each of these fruits, besides being delicious, increases your attributes. And in total there are only 4 fruits for more than 7 people who are there, so let the fight begin. And sure enough, the people went crazy for the tree, it was hair pulling, slapping, and so on, the guy without teeth there on the floor was saying that if they had cooperated it would all be theirs, and the protagonist just told him to shut up because it's not time yet. The people who were fighting started grabbing the fruits and immediately eating them, but little do they know, the more they eat, the more dangerous it gets. And meanwhile, the people who were addicted like our protagonist are going to enjoy the most sadistic and perverted banquet that follows. And so the tree starts to come to life and whip the people, and here the people come out of amnesia and remember what happens here, only the man there died 50 times just in this part. And then everyone runs away, the guy with the broken tooth is already gone. But the protagonist just teasingly calls him, saying that the real prize of this event can only be obtained after eating all the fruits. He on the ground asked how so, but at this point, we need to advance from opposite sides at the same time, distracting the tree to reach its core. So the two of them start running, but the other one stops midway and goes back all self-important, saying that the protagonist is stupid to think he would follow him. 
But little does he know that the protagonist did that on purpose and he was the only bait behind, and right away he took one to the face. The protagonist moves forward, confident as ever, on top of the tree dodging the whips, ninja style, until its core finally reveals itself. And meanwhile, our protagonist is running his hand along its branch, and he's saying that this is the monster of an event, so it doesn't give you experience, just puts you in the Hall of Fame. The mangrove uses vampiric vine abilities. But even though our protagonist is the typical addict who couldn't peel himself away from the game, there's no way he can dodge everything coming at him. But on the contrary, he can defend against some and dodge others using the branch he ripped from the tree, and so the protagonist moves on calmly and stylishly smiling. Until a noise starts and who was doing that, it was Sleep Butterflies, a blue animal that spread sleep powder as a defense mechanism, the late night people's arch enemy. But for our protagonist addict, this is a piece of cake, so he just holds his breath and goes straight for the core, until finally he succeeds. The system comes saying that he's the first to defeat the mangrove of greed. So finally, all that time researching patterns paid off. Another screen said his achievements will be recorded in tomorrow's Hall of Fame. What's your name? Hmm, I won't tell. And so our protagonist decides to keep everything confidential in anonymous tabs to not reveal his plans, but still the system wanted a name, and he goes and sends an unknown one. But to really disguise it, his face will be covered by a mosaic and his voice altered. And now the most important, right guys, we stick our hand inside the tree and presto chango. What came out of there was a biloka known as the essence of the tree. It's good, if that fruit gave 3 strength, agility, or magic, this orb here gives about 12 attribute points, that basic hack that no one saw. Our protagonist, not dumb, eats it and a light appears, and with that, he's a level 1 with 12 attribute points, meaning, the strongest level 1 in the world. Now an hour later, the video is being uploaded to YouTube with only 10 minutes left, because the scoundrel still recorded, with all that happening and before the video came out the chat already exploded with comments and views, especially from the protagonist's haters saying it was a hoax, but when the video aired, they all shut up and disappeared. And meanwhile, on the protagonist's main account, there were already plenty of people wanting to sponsor him, offering a lot of money, and the protagonist there just wow, since he lived a difficult life and struggled to survive, he was the guy who was always behind on rent and starved to buy junk food and eat live. And if he had received these proposals yesterday, he would have signed right away, but now it's different, he doesn't want to share knowledge with the people. Now the most important thing is to have a monopoly on information. So he turns on his phone, because the next destination is the National Museum of Korea, without wasting time, because in this tower there are artifacts and in the museum is a place where you can get replicas of these artifacts just like a treasure chest. And now probably everyone will run there to try to steal the artifacts, even former top players, our protagonist won't do differently, so he went to the museum. Right when the protagonist arrives there, he comes face to face with a charred body. So people are already here, according to Jin Hyuk, people got very smart overnight because they're here for an artifact called the Great Map of the Eastern Land, but don't think it's the map of Korea, because this is a special map that has magical energy and contains information from the Tower of Tests, like labyrinth locations and stuff, and that's why everyone wants it. And here there are people killing each other and fighting among themselves, total violence, until a man arrives telling them to stand still. Actually, he's this muscular guy trying to intimidate people, saying that whoever moves will die, and the people behind don't care because they're all screwed. Until suddenly the guy turns into a gorilla clapping his hands, literally he got monster hands or iron hands, the people behind were surprised, and he had to tear his shirt just to show the tattoo there, right? He comes talking with that all-powerful air that the map would be his, until another person arrives and this time it's an old man, and where's our protagonist who disappeared out of nowhere? But continuing, the old man said he couldn't agree with that, the guy asked if the old man was crazy, but he himself said that his name is Min Junwo which means live life with kindness and friendship. The angry guy said he's going to shake his flabby parts like it's a chicken's neck. So, the old man continues frowning, asking if he thinks it's quicker for him to come break his neck or to turn him into charcoal. And now we understand why the guy was carbonized at the beginning, it was the old man's doing. And so, he uses fireball upwards turning the guy into charcoal, let's see how long our protagonist will keep falling for the fight with him. Then he asked if Yuri got the items. And so the woman with a sinister look summons a big dog from Egypt, so a monster with 3 meters tall and spiked ears emerged, threatening the people behind. And so, the people give up fighting and throw their weapons on the ground. But look who finally showed up, yes, our protagonist appeared like a shadow with his hand in his pocket, saying that people turned this into a mess, but at least this wasn't torn, and this probably must be that map everyone's after. The woman behind was smiling asking if the protagonist thinks she's joking. And because of that, she commands her dog to get Jin Hyuk. And so the monster roared and came with its spear towards Jin Hyuk, who's calm, right, the strongest level 1. 
The protagonist arrived hitting the monster who didn't even get up, while the people behind are all surprised that his hand is still intact. And well, after our tough guy beat up the monster, the woman still summon more, and in that she opens her bag and takes out four more from inside. And so the Anubis avatar artifact is coming to life. While Jin Hyuk is with a wow face, and the woman angry with her gang of dogs by her side to get the protagonist. But Yuri in her vision is good, managing to control five dog statues with low mana, so she and the old man would be decent to cool level. But turns out that's nothing compared to our Jin Hyuk, so he calls the dogs to fight, and in that he throws that artifact he picked up on the ground, which wasn't the map but a drawing of a tiger, and throwing that up everything starts shining. Because mana was inserted into the artifact, Pine Tiger, the ruler of the mountains appears. And in that, a giant tiger came out, the angry dogs wanted to get him, but in the end, there was no fight, it was a total massacre on the dogs, the tiger tore everything apart. And when he was about to get the woman, she already fell down, no need to even touch her. So here comes Jin Hyuk with that smile telling her to come over here. She asked for what? But of course, he wants another artifact hidden with her, Tutankhamun's mask. And with that, we obtained the second artifact, so now the tiger will protect the area so no one follows the protagonist inside, so he went to get the strongest ability of the Tower of Tests. Arriving up there, the old man with fireballs is sweating cold thinking about what happened to the dog Yuri, but at this point Jin Hyuk starts talking that this barrier is rank 1. The old man said nothing passes through this barrier. The protagonist put his hand and saw that there's a way to destroy it, but there's a condition, you must keep using your flame magic constantly on it to weaken it and meanwhile he will grab the relics and bring them to this side. The clever old man said that this won't work, but Jin Hyuk in the end leads the conversation and convinces the old man to use the magic there in exchange for the map. Then Jin Hyuk jumps inside with that mischievous smile because just by entering there he starts seeing the relics. But there's one missing that was taken by that guy that neither you nor I know who he is, but he came here and took the sword. Until now he found the relic that looks like a necklace full of gold coins, so this is the last piece of the puzzle to make the most powerful ability. And now, combining the Persian ceremonial mold, the right eye of Tutankhamun's mask, the two relics started reacting. And now adding the other one made a big explosion combining the relics successfully. So now Jin Hyuk possesses the Eye of Truth, SS class, which has the effect of seeing status windows of others and knowing if they're lying or telling the truth, being able to use it only three times a day. But wait, there's more, that wasn't the only reason, and that's why now we're going on the secret mission since its requirements have been fulfilled. And now Jin Hyuk acquired the Overlink Fusion along with the Memory of the World. And now that Hack knocked on the door for good, this ability he got allows him, upon completing specific missions, to copy and store others' inherent abilities and then throw them into the world memory, that's where the Hack starts working, as there he merges them to create powers of higher dimensions. But if the copying ability exceeds the limit, the condition can be changed. And while all this is happening, the old man is almost dying throwing fire until now at the barrier, so the protagonist passes with his eye on the old man to see the condition of the copy. Inside the screen it says Young Wu has always been hiding his true feelings, make him reveal his true feelings. So Jin Hyuk tells him to stop using his ability because there's no reason for him to keep doing that. The old man asks what he's talking about, but in fact, what he didn't do was for nothing, because the way to break the barrier was just to speak in Latin like the protagonist did before, but the guy is so cunning that he made the old man spend all his mana for nothing. And now, to irritate him, he went to set fire to the map since he doesn't need it and the old man can't do anything but watch. And as soon as the fire went up, the old man was angry at Jin Hyuk, who ended up meeting the conditions by copying the ability of the fireballs. The old man starts attacking his fire at Jin Hyuk, but he goes and makes a fire bigger than his, showing that our monster is already much stronger. So after everything, four veterans appeared at the National Museum of Korea, including the protagonist, but are they trying to get ahead? Because here we have the most powerful level 1, the guy is grabbing the best items. And look, it didn't stop there at the museum, the protagonist even threatened the old man saying that he will be in touch soon and in the meantime, he and the dog girl should level up by then. And so, sort of getting two subordinates, only they still don't know. But we still have a long way to go to gather all the necessary abilities. And since the protagonist is just one and we don't have the power to clone or anything like that, we'll have to pick only the best of the best. But now it's time to eat because the stomach started rumbling. And so we're here in the shop eating while people are watching the news, all surprised, and there they're saying that there were 23 dead and 50 injured at the museum, only that's for now since people are still dying there, and they also say that it didn't just happen in Korea but all over the world. On the museum cameras that are on TV, there's only the protagonist with a blurred face, humiliating the woman with the dogs with the tiger. Isn't that the same guy who appeared in the mangrove? They can hardly imagine that the same guy is back there eating, but then we have 
have to find a better disguise otherwise it will be trouble for Jin Hyuk. It also says that the government is investigating the tower and the famous Awakening Association has just been created, and now we will hear details from the head of the Awakening Association. The man with the stern face starts talking about gathering the awakened and also promises to give a salary of at least 60 million won annually, which according to Mr. Google's calculations is over 43 million dollars. Additionally, there will also be a rank 7 position in the government. And of course, this excludes the person who appeared in the videos. If he joins us as the leader, he promised that the government would provide all the support and everything he wanted. But no matter what they offer, our cunning guy has no intention of joining the others, since in this world well-trained guys have the strength greater than 100 normal hunters. And the clever guy knows that and that's why he's offering all that just to lure the protagonist. But our trickster doesn't want to, and he's keeping an eye out wanting to copy his ability. And since it's now 7 o'clock, the test tower is opening. So many people gathered at the door waiting for it to open and the protagonist there in the middle. Until they start giving 100 gold coins to each one who was there. And besides, players can level up their videos and earn 100 gold coins for every 10,000 views. In other words, the tower itself is there making its own YouTube. However, there will be an extra charge, depending on the player. And if anyone tries to cheat the system, I don't want to say anything, but it's just a little skull. And when the warnings end, everyone rushes inside, and our trickster is there pensive already knowing what he's going to do, something that no one would do first. Because there was a time when the crazy ones were stuck on one of the 30 floors and after failing to pass the protagonist ended up deleting his account and starting everything over. But hey, the key to everything is inside this first labyrinth that is famous for its confusing paths and numerous traps to screw people until they give up. But since we owe nothing to anyone, let's just go. We open the door and it's all the same in the game. The guy even stopped to see the little light butterfly passing by. But then a smiling trio appears. I already suspect them, they're smiling too much, unless they're sadists, right, and no other explanation. Ten minutes ago, the guys were following the protagonist at the entrance to the labyrinth. So the woman here gave the command for them to enter together thinking it was an easy thing, since if a level 1 is going in there, then it shouldn't be that difficult, and people are already eyeing to stab the protagonist in there. Just extras being extras, and what happens to extras, I don't even need to say. But continuing, the smiling trio is here calling the protagonist to explore the labyrinth with them, and he, no fool, already activates the eye of truth seeing the woman's status, but isn't she have an interesting ability? The communion, which can make her become friends with anyone, even strangers. So you think Jin Hyuk with one of these, it's going to be trouble. And the condition to copy this ability is to cooperate with her for at least 240 hours, which would be 10 days or more, but there's a catch to all this, after the 240 hours, they'll have to be alone with her. So there's no way around it, we'll have to be part of the smiling trio. And with that, everyone starts introducing themselves, and the protagonist all smiling, the smiling trio, right, they have to smile, but we don't even need to remember the names of these people, they're going to betray us anyway. So the interested one comes grabbing the protagonist's arm, asking how far he got in the tower. Park Hanna activated the communion ability. He even told her to go away because he already knows what she's going to try, the protagonist there instead of saying the floor because he zeroed the thing, he says he went as far as he could, but then the woman, persistent even though she failed, is asking about the information on this first floor. This labyrinth can change at fixed intervals. And at this point everything starts shaking and the wall flying and people running in fear, almost getting hit by stones in the face. Jin Hyuk was just watching while the trio wanted to get out, but what happens is that not even with ability one finds an exit, so in the end everyone is stuck here, because they were stupid enough to follow the protagonist thinking this was a corner market. The extras started complaining, everyone blaming the protagonist for almost getting them killed, and the protagonist just, hey, did I ask you guys to follow me? You came on your own, screw yourselves. So they all went after our protagonist who was calm, because he arrived, and who is he? A monster that appears throwing axes at the crazies. There's already one less who took it on the side and now it's screwed for them because the battle is about to begin. The Minotaur arrived angry sending one to the coffin, and now the people are really scared. But the protagonist is different, right, he goes for it already dodging the little axe. As he dodges, the hack screen announces that he obtained the secret rift attribute, which works as follows, it's an attribute that decreases the rift between levels when battling strong guys like the Minotaur, and when the opponent is weak, it's the opposite. And what do we make of that? Nothing. So we continue, the protagonist just grabs the Minotaur's horn and throws him down while he's angry. Jin Hyuk thinks this is the best method he found after being beaten to the ground by the Minotaur in the game. And this method is 
literally just dodging while his rift attribute increases, and he can do it because he knows all of the monster's attack patterns. It turns into a chase, but the Minotaur isn't hitting anything, while the people behind are scared because they were about to mess with a guy like him. But the Minotaur doesn't give up and attacks Jin Hyuk, but he remains calm, just increasing his rift. But wait, are those extras trying to escape? Jin Hyuk appears behind them asking where they think they're going, and not even a breeze passes because along with the protagonist there comes the Minotaur behind with his axe. One tries to pull the other, they both end up standing still, and the Minotaur in front of them, not so helpless, right? Jin Hyuk asks why they stood still, they should have dodged, right? Horned one. At that moment, the maze begins to close, and he bids farewell to the Minotaur because the wall closed, dividing them. While from the smiling trio only the protagonist, the woman, and the coward who asks if that thing will come after them again remain. The calm protagonist says that the Minotaur is attracted by the dust of those butterflies, which are actually moths, and since the protagonist touched them, Minotaur will come back soon. The woman asks why on earth he's doing this, but of course, it's to increase attributes and become stronger, so he tells them to rest because Minotaur Minotaur will arrive soon, they ask how long they will stay here, but in fact, they will only leave in a month. This way their shine vanished, meaning they'll have to escape from the Minotaur for a whole month if they manage to stay alive. So since the Minotaur is attracted to the protagonist, they have the brilliant idea to leave, but Jin Hyuk, not foolish, starts saying that it will be more dangerous for them to leave like that, who knows what awaits them ahead, and that's why they got scared. So in the end, the trio gives up and says they'll follow him, but, hold on, to get into Jin Hyuk's backpack, they have to pay the price, so he asks for all their coins, and thus the tables turned on the swindlers. And now we're in another corner with a man killing the goblin. And this was a video from the system's own YouTube, a trending video Video with over 1 million views. This made the man happy because he's making money, but there's a catch, in the video, it shows that he completed someplace in 15 hours alone, but in reality, he had a lot of help that was cut in the editing so nobody would know. But now a comment from the bald human comes in, could this be the lost Saitama, and he's saying he knows someone who completed it in 5 hours except him who did it in one punch. And as the man was saying the world is full of haters, a new video starts entering the hall of fame pushing theirs aside. And this was none other than our protagonist being the first in the world to have an item with plus 10 refinement. And now back to the labyrinth, Jin Hyuk is telling the trio to go look for wood and moss for them to use, and meanwhile, let's open the market and buy some things, from tarot cards to a piece of a cartwheel and a parchment. And this might seem a bit silly, but hold on because what matters is how you'll use them. So the protagonist combines the old key with the card and the piece of wheel, which in the end made a wheel of fortune of the Roman goddess of luck, except it's incomplete, but still, it's very difficult to achieve this S-class item because it increases your luck for 10 minutes and can only be used once. Jin Hyuk, not foolish, activates it, maximizing his luck and summoning all the scrolls he bought at the market that have a 0.0000012% chance of refining the item, but now it's 100%, so he made an old dagger reach maximum refinement, and also earned 5,000 gold coins for being the first in Korea to do this. And please come with a trophy for this legend because he truly deserves it. And now we're on the 10th day in hell, the trio in front of the fire with moss beds and nothing to eat besides mushrooms, while Jin Hyuk was sleeping. Yuri remembered that in these 10 consecutive days they had to run from the Minotaur while the protagonist went calmly. Now they were talking to the anonymous ones that appear on these screens, and they're making fun of them, but on the serious side, her guild will take at least three weeks to get here, meaning it's another three weeks fleeing from the Minotaur. Until the coward starts having suicidal ideas of wanting to kill the protagonist who was sleeping and hiding for these three weeks. So he grabs a stone and when he was about to hit him on the head, Yuri stops him halfway because she has an even better idea. She has this crossbow stinger that has a lethal poison, because if you're going to kill, you have to do it right, and guess where they put it, in the protagonist's food. And here it's only fine dining, friends, wooden plate, mushroom, and rat bone skewer, and so they eat cunningly, until it's the coward who falls, he got hit with the strongest chili pepper, because in the end the protagonist knew everything and swapped the plates when they had their backs turned. Jin Hyuk stood up saying that streaming secretly is cheating. Yuri tried to play dumb, while the anonymous ones were there in the chat, saying that it was left for them. The protagonist starts talking about the live streaming function, which is only active when you're in the boss room. So apparently we're reporting that to the system, and so Yuri starts getting surrounded by danger, so you can imagine, it screwed her over, everyone left the chat and they even got a one month ban and a warning that next time they'll be banned, and the penalty for the player will be harsh. After that, the Minotaur charged, the girl shitting herself scared behind the protagonist asked where she had to go, he sarcastically asked if they weren't going to poison him, so why would he help her now? But now the conditions for copying the woman's ability were met, which were the 240 hours, and they're alone, 
so he copied the communion ability, and so now Jin Hyuk doesn't need her anymore, Yuri tried to threaten, but the Minotaur was coming at both of them with his axe, the protagonist jumps up, prepares his dagger and lands on the Minotaur's horn hitting his neck and descending to the ground, now he charged again, dodging and using the fireball attack, as it didn't work, he ended up retreating because the Minotaur activated Berserker mode, which increases all attributes by 30%, he comes at them like a madman full of green fire, and one detail, he can speak now too, the protagonist down below prepares the dagger and tells him to come at him, and now it's just axe against dagger, in the end, Jin Hyuk comes out on top, while he remembers he died many times around here, but this time it's different, as his rift keeps increasing the fight continues, until after so much battling, the Minotaur's 5 minutes end and he loses the buffed mode, and now the protagonist even turns his back looking at the system and he already has 57 rift points, this means he's at the same power level as a level 19, but he's at level 1, and now there are still 20 more days for us to play with the Minotaur, after that, the 20 days passed and Jin Hyuk was still facing the angry Minotaur charging at him, while he was relaxed increasing his rift. Soon the sad Minotaur will pick up his backpack and leave this maze. But today is different, since it's the last day and so he delivers the punch that knocks the Minotaur out cold on the ground. Is it him getting weaker or is our protagonist just too strong now? But anyway, this is our last farewell, horned one. Then Jin Hyuk looks to the side, because now we're dealing with the last survivor of the trio who from now on will just call the intern. And hold on, you'll understand why. So our protagonist arrives saying he's going to hire her for the veteran players company. And that's why Yuri gets desperate saying she really wants to work for this company. But since she's such a passionate applicant, he asks what she can do for the company from now on? She tries to talk about the communion ability, but no, the protagonist already took that, so she continues saying she won't betray him. Jin Hyuk starts pressuring her until she, crying, sweating, shouts that she'll give him the brain ring, as her superior made a deal with the Chinese to prove something strange there. And so Jin Hyuk is thinking, this is the brain ring, one of the best items on the first floor, because its effects increase movement speed, magical resistance, and can suppress monster magic. He uses the eye of truth to see if she was telling the truth. And as it's correct, he congratulates her, she has just been hired as an intern for the company. And just to detail, they don't pay the interns, but if he needs her, she has to come running immediately, even if it's at 3 in the morning or when she's asleep, if that happens you go while still asleep. But before that, she has to sign a contract. And so the protagonist starts combining his two abilities, communion and fire element, which in the end resulted in the soul mark ability. And as you can imagine what he's going to do, because he holds her with that congratulatory look, because the contracts here are special, there's no signing, and thus the ability activates. And a screen comes up saying the ability puts a mark on the target and whoever is marked must always obey orders and if they try anything funny, they'll catch fire. And so we got our first slave, I mean, companion. After that, Jin Hyuk completed the labyrinth and went outside where the intern is crying tears of joy, while they each received 5,000 gold coins for completing the maze. But then the protagonist just turns and tells her to pass the coins to him. And adding everything up, we have 10,000 gold coins, and she was also supposed to bring the brain ring in 3 days. She says it's a short time, and he reduces the time to 2 days. So Yuri is screwed because the soul mark starts activating and she has to agree anyway. Now, on the city's screen, the news guys are talking about how the best guild in Korea is going to challenge the boss on the third floor. But the protagonist says that's kind of dumb because there's a time limit of 90 days per floor, so there's no need for them to go to the third floor just to be the first. Meanwhile, he's going to stay in the city to gather information from this last month he spent in the labyrinth with the Minotaur, and that's why he'll need reliable people. So Jin Hyuk was at home until he remembered that he knew two people. And that way, he went to the cafe with Lee Taemin and Yanawa, and these two are veterans who played together with the protagonist. And he, not foolish, activates the Eye of Truth and sees that Taemin has the innate ability of the Machine King is in the game. And the beautiful hot-tempered puncher also called Yanawa has the innate ability of devotion to Taekwondo, so you can see why the name, she only goes for punches. The condition to copy how they are as long-time companions will be for the three to challenge the 20th floor of the tower together. The protagonist introduces himself there as Kong Jin Hyuk, and his game nickname is a very peculiar name, Bong Bong, which means the sound of a fart in Korean. And then they were talking, Jin Hyuk catches up on what happened in this last month about the guilds around the world, the streamers, and that hooded groups were kidnapping and robbing people. But since the protagonist was in the labyrinth, he didn't take the test, 
and this test is because many people were dying on the second floor, so the Awakened Association created a test where only those who pass can enter the tower, which would be the famous ranks we already know. And from what the protagonist is thinking, that guy did it to prevent deaths and gather players with secret powers, and so now we're going to use it to our advantage. At this point, the author stops to explain what happens after joining the association. Inside, people are judged by their ranks, with an F or lower you are prohibited from entering the second floor, but on the other hand, if you have a high rank, then things are different because you'll have several connections with the best guilds besides having a bunch of people sucking up to you. And so there are three types of people who come here, those who want to qualify to climb the tower, the stick men who come to judge the ranks, and those who announce their ranks to the world. But meanwhile, there are a bunch of reporters taking pictures. But wait a minute, isn't that our intern? She has her hair down today, but the focus shifts to the muscular guy with little hair, who came to look at the intern and the other guy to take the test. And so the security guards start clearing the way, pushing the crowd, until up front Jin Hyuk is with his friends. The silly extras arrive telling him to get out. The protagonist looks mocking as always, saying he got his ticket and is here waiting. Then the hot-headed guy goes up to Jin Hyuk pointing his finger, who just uses his eye of truth. And to copy his ability, lethal stealth attack, the protagonist would need to increase his friendship with the target or maximize his hostility to copy any ability. And while the guy was cursing, the intern comes behind and when she saw Jin Hyuk she was terrified of the protagonist with that bloodthirsty look, he grabs the guy's finger and snaps it, that must have hurt, taking his finger up, and when he lets go, the guy comes up, while the protagonist was drinking water. And drink water, because the guy refused and got slapped, and screwed himself later taking one on the legs. It was so quick that nobody saw it, people thought he fell on his own, but the intern is behind, scared. Until the muscular guy with little hair arrives to assert authority, the protagonist tries to use the eye, but since the ability is low level, he can't see his stats. But his authority didn't work on Jin Hyuk, who arrived saying he didn't know he was walking with a nanny. And then the protagonist starts talking about someone named Goryeo Gizeng, and the muscular guy gets mad because it seems that wasn't meant for people to hear. Then he uses his black screen barrier ability that isolates him and the protagonist from the crowd. Inside the barrier Jin Hyuk starts talking about it proposing a deal, but the man pulls out his dagger, and is the protagonist going to stay quiet? Of course not, he pulls out his two, saying he's the one giving an opportunity here. And meanwhile, Jin Hyuk's friends are out there fighting against the other guards, until the black screen barrier deactivates and muscular guy walks off in one direction and Jin Hyuk in another. Now, you'd think inside the barrier, muscular guy didn't fare well, and the author didn't even want to show us that. So, off goes muscular guy, while the other guy is still itching to fight Jin Hyuk, but he just gets a neck pull to make him quiet down, meaning muscular guy is putting the kid to sleep, while he's swearing revenge. So Jin Hyuk copied one of his abilities because hostility was at its peak, which was the breath of light, an ability used to control breathing and heartbeats. And now the protagonist is excitedly heading towards where the ranking screen is. The intern is in first place and is ranked 1755. Then the man calls the next one, and Jin Hyuk enters. Inside the room the man says he should hit this magic crystal, and it doesn't matter if he's using an item or magic, just give his strongest blow, like those Dragon Ball machines where people test their strength. Jin Hyuk took his dagger without using any item, it was just a level 1 slash, the strongest, then the man asked him to hit this small crystal here, but the protagonist goes straight to the big one, a medium level crystal. While the man is telling him to go for the small one, he just activates the rift and sends a cutting blow to split the crystal in half, leaving the man with his mouth wide open because nobody has ever done that, maybe not even the other rankers. So, startled, he goes to report to the supervisors. But the protagonist stops him, telling him to delay this report for a week, but the man doesn't want to do that. Hearing this, Jin Hyuk took his dagger, saying there are things he learned in life, and one of them was that a fist nearby is scarier than a law far away, and this is for the dumb extras who obey, at least, who's going to do something after a threat like that. Now the protagonist is outside waiting, until the intern arrives delivering the ring he asked for, which is the Braham's ring, in the end, she didn't even need three days. So she runs, crying with the slap mark on her face, asking him to take it off, but that will depend on how she behaves. But after that, we're with the friends in Jin Hyuk saying he got rank F, so they're shocked, but it's just a temporary rank since he's going to take the test again in a week. And as the protagonist, in quotes, passed the first test, the second is for him to finish a dungeon. And that's what he's going to do because this is a place that only exists on the first floor, a forbidden zone that they've never conquered before, not even in 11 years of the game. So the next destination is the Chamber of the Fallen. Now we're with everyone equipped with ammunition, while the man asks what the protagonist is doing here, so he says he needs money because he started living alone, and the man says he came for his family, while the protagonist is there thinking that these are the ones who will go in coffins first. 
until we finally reach the raid, and there appear screens saying it was s difficulty, the objective is to defeat the boss and take the throne in the depths of the ruin, and since they are the first to enter, Jin Hyuk earned the bonus of being the first to conquer the tower, and in this chest bonus, he gained plus 10 luck and some strange item, and also came the cold heart, along with the passive skill of monopolizing, which allows you to receive the best of all rewards. And then the protagonist opens the child scaring smile because now, among the thousands of tower rewards, the best ones come to him. At that moment a circle opened in the middle and armored people started arriving, saying that the 50 arrived safely. Jin Hyuk, as always, uses his eye of truth. But he didn't understand why a captain of one of the top 10 guilds only has this much power? What is the world coming to? Later, inside the ruins, the wizard is saying that from here it's dark, so it's best to stick together and not get lost. And when he activates his illuminate ability, you can see that the place is large, there are even skeletons in the corner and crickets on the wall. The man at the back starts warning that the carriers have arrived, and Jin Hyuk is in the middle finding it strange that no one has died yet, until one of the men slaps him on the back, telling him to go deliver water and ice from that side, while he delivers from the other. And meanwhile, the protagonist is noticing that there are foreigners here, and it's funny that they call every blonde hair foreign, so when a Korean dyes their hair blonde, do they become foreign or what? The symbol on the armor of those people was from one of the most powerful guilds in Europe, the Zion Guild, and there's even a short one among them. Jin Hyuk, intrigued, activates communion and goes to bring the glass of water to the short girl wearing a helmet. And when she took off the helmet, just look, she's a beautiful blonde. And this person was the youngest daughter of a powerful family in Europe who has divine power and can both attack and defend and also serve to heal the people, better known as the heroine who saved a country from the outbreak, the saint of Amsterdam Teresa. And now we understand why no one has died yet. While she was drinking the water, Jin Hyuk tried to use the Eye of Truth, but failed because it was high level, but luck and adaptability attributes neutralize the level difference. Teresa's status is very good in addition to the copying conditions, as she is a player who is in the top 100 worldwide, you have to save her life in a dangerous situation to copy any ability. She thanks while Jin Hyuk is smiling because this is a chance to copy one of the most powerful paladin abilities, the blessing of the stars, now it's like how are we going to make this happen? Then the scene cuts to the men falling to the ground because they hit the guardian sentinel, and the guardian of the ruins now saw the invaders. The captain was asking who was the idiot who touched that. But even with people dying and the guardians surrounding them, the captain wants to continue inside without any reinforcements because they have Saint Teresa. And when the guy comes to warn, the guy says it's all good, until he gets slapped and disappears, then the guys crap themselves with fear. And where the captain was, the generalized monster battle begins. And now the group that was screwed saw Teresa saving everyone with her sword. Until on the carriers, the uncle almost went in a coffin, and now the protagonist is getting into action, tearing apart the creatures and sending fireballs to save the family man. At this moment a figure passed by, but it was actually Teresa who took the man away, she turns around saying she thought Jin Hyuk was a good person, but he's threatening a non-combatant with a dagger in hand, so she thinks it was him who awakened the guardians, and she's wanting to attack, so you ask me what she smoked, because she's not doing very well. Then she comes running up and hits the ground, telling him not to resist because she doesn't want to hurt him. And she didn't want to hurt, but just made a huge funny hole in the ground. So Teresa keeps going until Jin Hyuk gets tired of the game and dodges, sending her to the ground. He points the dagger at her face, saying it wasn't him who awakened the guardians and if it had been, she would already be checking if there's bread in heaven, until one of the men appears in the back asking why they're fighting. Then she realized the misunderstandings and apologizes, asking why he hides his identity. The protagonist says it's for the same reason she's doing the class mission in secret, and actually, he's also looking for a paper oath and an item in secret. And since he knows everything about this ruin and the items they want are in the same area, he asks if he can go with her. And now we go back to the weak boss who's crazy because Teresa wants to explore alone separated from the team. Then she gave several excuses, and in the end, he had to accept, but she was supposed to meet them at the edge of the map. Then she says she'll take a carrier to help, and when she looks to the corner, the guys are all suspicious, each looking in a different direction, not wanting to go. Until Jin Hyuk raises his hand saying he'll go, while the old men are telling him not to because it's dangerous. So the protagonist starts acting as if in a soap opera and convinces everyone. And so he went to accompany Teresa until they reached the place and down there it's full of monsters surrounding a coffin with a barrier. And from what Teresa said, the oath that the protagonist wants is inside, so they have to get rid of the monsters and that barrier to get it. But a warning screen appeared saying that the owner of the camera is staring at them, but this time it wasn't just the protagonist who saw, Teresa was also seeing. She says maybe he recognized her, even though he might have recognized our conceited Jin Hyuk. 
Then she asks what they're going to have to do, but then it cuts to her jumping down activating the warrior's song, which increases attributes by 3 for 10 minutes. And the reason for that is that she needs to attract the attention of the zombies, and as soon as she activates the first one, the monsters come running, but she still activates the strengthening of divine power and goes after the monsters with her sword, while the protagonist walks calmly stepping on the heads of the zombies. Until there was an explosion from the side and the secret undead appeared, which is this giant skull. Jin Hyuk is happy, but the headless knight comes at him, and he keeps dodging and trying to attack. But the protagonist's plan was to use the black thunder from the giant skull to destroy the barrier because it's a very strong blow capable of sending veterans to the grave. So when he was about to launch the attack, the protagonist runs forward, dodges, and the thunder destroys the barrier. And so the protagonist passes by cutting the headless guards, and now only the skull that took a cut in the middle of the face is left. But at this moment, someone appears saying, long time no see. But since Jin Hyuk didn't recognize who he was, he was angry. So the protagonist uses the Eye of Truth. This person is a swordsman with the ability of sword song, and to copy this ability, we have to beat him in a 1v1 sword fight, which is the weapon he has the most confidence in. Then the protagonist remembers that this sword of his was the one from the museum that disappeared, so he remembers that back when he played, there was a guy who challenged him twice and lost, but it didn't end there, he kept challenging the protagonist in losing. So this guy is that psycho stalker? Then the protagonist doesn't even want to believe that, but the guy is calling for a 1v1 again saying that this time it will be different, and he won't be defeated by Jin Hyuk, but the protagonist has an ace up his sleeve which is Teresa, and knowing this, he uses the battlefield selection ability that closes everything around, and when Teresa was approaching the protagonist, he just waves because now they are inside the arena with the guy wanting a 1v1, he activated the mano a mano ability that increases his attributes by 10% and decreases the opponents by 10%, but the protagonist gives that smile because an absurdly disadvantageous situation was detected, and the special condition of the fusion ability was activated, which is when the guy is in a disadvantageous situation for the copying conditions, and so the conditions are modified accordingly, and now the copy was approved before the conditions were fulfilled. So only the S-Class Sword Song ability passes here, which increases the understanding of swords by 200%, so even if we got one of those, we could go out cutting monsters, and with it copied, the guy comes up not knowing anything. Jin Hyuk summons his dagger and goes on as if nothing with his sword, which makes the guy angrier as he says this is fun, then the guy starts using the sword energy ability, but the protagonist just dodges to the side saying he's really using such an ability against a beginner swordsman. Then Yu Sun points his finger, but the protagonist's dagger will end up breaking like this, so he puts this pill on the dagger and activates the fusion ability, merging the sword zone with the demon soul pill, resulting in the unique SS class ability Tomb of Swords, just to show you how much Jin Hyuk is overpowered because now he increased his sword understanding level by 500%. After this, the guy struck a pose because now Jin Hyuk is going to have this stalker for dinner, and so he activated the Tomb of Swords and the Knight of the Black Moon, and even though this isn't the full strength, Yu Sun was scared because this was supposed to be his chance to defeat the protagonist, but all of this is going downhill since within the game, it was defeat, and now even outside of the game, he prepared so much with photos and techniques but can't surpass the protagonist, meaning, the guy is just an extreme level stalker. So he goes for it, and the protagonist goes along cutting off all of his abilities, and appearing like a shadow behind, because you're going to be eaten, and then it was just one sword strike that Yu Sung tried to hold, but couldn't and almost broke the sword falling to the other side, and now it's another victory for the protagonist. And according to Yu Sung, this was battle number 138 and that's why he gave up asking Jin Hyuk to send him to the grave, but the protagonist says that next time will be 139, and he starts with a whole speech that the tower is no joke and needs strong players like him, and the reason he seems so kind is because we need to wait 60 days to copy another ability from the same person, so now we're just fattening the cattle to copy everything later. And so he activates communion. And then Yu Sun leaves asking what his name was, but the protagonist acts tough and doesn't say. Then the guy leaves calling him fart of shit, which was his name in the game, and Teresa stays behind not understanding anything. So later, the bumbling club is analyzing the terrain because there's an enemy ahead. The guy says the monsters are coming. And at this point, an iron golem arrives with a white-haired elf. Actually, it's not just an elf because from what the weak captain is saying, this is a high-ranking vampire, who welcomes them and says he is a blood relative serving Jinzo, who is the mistress of these ruins. The weakling sweating points the sword thinking he's going to do something, but the guy doesn't care, stands still saying he has a proposal for them, and the proposal is as follows, they either quietly go with him or half of the troops will become today's dinner, meaning they choose whether they become dinner here or ahead. So he uses abilities that leave the weakling speechless. Then we go back to Jin Hyuk, the fierce talent copier, and Teresa using her divine purification on this crystal, which is the 
Frozen Tear, another stolen item that ended up in the hands of our copier because the thing has SSS difficulty, since it enhances the magical power of the person, but if it's not purified beforehand, the user will receive a fatal damage, and that's why Teresa is doing this. So here we find the multitasking woman, and using the thing, the protagonist increased his magical power by 12, so he was happy and so were we because more hack means more supporting characters will get a beating. But at this point, a screen appears for Teresa saying that the camera master sent an invitation, which was to save the weaklings club that surrendered to the vampire and find the camera master, and if she accepted, all the monsters and traps leading to the last room would be removed. Seeing this, Teresa doesn't even think and starts to rise because she's going to save the people, but she's afraid she won't be able to defeat Jinzo and will become a toy in his hands because even with the scaredy cats together, that would be difficult. The stalker Yusung starts to get up to leave, but before he passes by Teresa saying he's going to give her some advice, and the advice starts by needling the protagonist as always, but he's sure now the only person who can defeat Jinzo will be that idiot. So he starts walking and Teresa goes to the protagonist saying she wants to hire him for a group, but the contract fee he says is not cheap, but she accepts saying she'll give him all the coins to help fight against Jinzo. Now she's speaking our language, 100% contract closed. So the monsters fall asleep and they reach the door, but there's so much energy that Teresa even takes a step back, but the protagonist goes ahead saying that in fights it's not always the strongest who wins. So whatever happens, just trust him and let's go. Inside the hall are the vampires and the camera boss on the throne, and actually this Jinzo was a vampire kitty with white hair known as Alice, the protagonist arrived asking if the weaklings were safe. Then she deactivates the ability and everyone appears on the floor, all tied up from head to toe, almost ready to become that dinner, just throw it in the pot and cook it. Jin Hyuk activates the eye and finds out that it was this guy who awakened the guardians, and she comes saying she called them here because of the scent the protagonist emits, and this was the sweetest scent she ever felt, and of course, she's talking about blood, right guys? And because of this scent, she's all stimulated wanting to give some kisses to Jin Hyuk, saying she likes to savor the things she eats, but wait, this is getting weird already. The protagonist still thanks for the goodwill, but he has no intention of living as a luxury snack bar. Then the woman gets angry, shooting lasers from her hand, because here it's dictatorship, buddy, your words mean nothing, you'll serve us food anyway. But hey, folks, would you like to spend 60 years being sucked by a vampire like this? But after this, the protagonist steps forward saying he'll give something sweeter than his blood. But the vampire says that for them, there's nothing more important than blood, so she won't change her mind, and he says even if this offer is your freedom? Then she widened her eyes, while the people get angry saying they'll tear him apart, but she stops everyone and tells him to take responsibility for what he said. So the protagonist stands up, puts on a mask, and says his name is Kong Jin Hyuk, and as a representative of the demoniac humans, he will free her from this place, and these demoniac humans are the guys who rejected humanity for money and power and for that, they joined the monsters of labyrinths and ruins. Jin Hyuk continues to say that he contacted the temple on the 27th floor and the fact that he is here and fooled all the barriers was sent by them, and when he mentions the temple, the guys get scared until the vampire says that if he knows about the temple, he must not be lying, but she won't trust him because anyone can say they can, and besides, he is too good a tongue, so she won't trust him, and she activates her blood spears and sends them up. At this point, Teresa appears in front using sacred reinforcement on the shield and holds everything but the spears keep coming, while the vampire up there laughs saying she makes so much effort for almost nothing, but she still hates divine power, so she activates the blood explosion ability to send them to their coffins. But Teresa smiles because she trusts the famous protagonist, but at this point there's a sound of a knife, Jin Hyu cut Teresa with the knife. I was already not understanding anything, now it seems like I'm not understanding anything even more. And when he lets go, he tells the vampire that if he proves he's not a bluff, would she trust him? The vampire is speechless saying it's fun, but that's not enough, she wants more proof. And now Teresa down there, almost broken, asks why he did that, but Jin Hyuk raises his hand and I don't even want to see this because he continued, while the vampire was laughing saying she'll give him a chance to speak. So he comes saying he prepared a 7 star spell to deceive the barrier, and the thing is, if he seals her soul with the Braham ring, the barrier can be deceived, she had never heard of this herself. And now Jin Hyuk comes talking about the real reason he kept his status at level 1, giving up all the experience to level up, and the reason for that was the 7 star ability, the soul transfer that can only be used at level 1. So the guy has been cold and calculating since it all began until now, and that's why the user condition was fulfilled and the soul transfer will be activated with a cooldown of 365 days, being able to take only one soul. And now the spell will be completed after receiving the target's consent, and the protagonist comes saying that this magic circle will disappear after one minute, and the magic will activate when she accepts, and now the choice is hers to make or not to make. 
So she's thinking, while the henchmen are all scared, and she's sending telekinesis to the other big vampire that she can't trust the copier 100%, so if he tries anything strange, they should attack with everything, and so she's descending, thinking that it's been a thousand years since she was exiled to these ruins, and down there she asks if she can really trust, and he even acts all cool activating the communion because this guy is smart, so she allows the soul transfer. And now the ring is glowing because it's absorbing the soul of the progenitor Alice, and in the end, she ended up inside the ring, which she says is even comfortable. What if there's a sofa with those old TVs and a pack of snacks for you to munch on? But at this point the protagonist takes the ring saying he's glad she liked her new home. And at this moment, the unique ability blessing of the stars was activated, and Teresa starts to get up with the protagonist welcoming her because this blessing of the stars ability can revive once as long as death was an instant. So she just took a turn and came back, and this ability has a cooldown of 240 hours, and she gets up tired but smiling while the vampire is angry wanting to get out of the ring. But now is not the time for questions because the vampire dudes are already coming up activating the blood wave, and the protagonist just activates his fire element and starts throwing punches that scatter everything around, and Teresa doesn't stand still either, she activates the sign of the cross and starts freeing everyone from the bumbling club while Jin Hyuk is soloing the vampires with the dagger, and saying that since their mistress was sealed, they've already lost. And that's why he activated the Tomb of Swords and the Vampire was activating the Dark Battle Spirit. And then everyone comes to fight with the protagonist who cuts everyone with his dagger, sending the guys to take a walk downstairs, which even left the scared guy wondering who he is, because he's still wearing that mask since he doesn't want to reveal his true identity to the others. Then he approaches Teresa who says that really hurt because it was the first time she died, but in the end, we won just like he said at the beginning, it's not always the strongest who win, and you just have to fool them to make it alright. She thanks, saying that everyone survived thanks to him. And so, pay attention to our protagonist, this one does deserves another myth trophy because the system says he saved Teresa's life and completed the copying conditions, because you remember we had to save her life in a critical situation. So we managed to copy the unique ability blessing of the stars, Teresa's broken ability that can revive, and now she's crying asking if he knew she could revive, but he plays dumb and comes telling them to grab the artifacts and go. But at that moment, the weak captain known as Scaredy Cat, stands up saying that all the items from this raid were under both guild's possession. Then Jin Hyuk stares at him, making the Scaredy Cat sweat, because it was the protagonist who did everything while they were all tied up, but the guy still tries to insist saying he'll reward him in another way, and the protagonist thinking that this one is a hopeless failure. In the end, he ends up letting the group keep the artifacts, but he warns them to be careful as he won't take responsibility. So the scaredy cat goes off with that greedy look already grabbing the first artifact which was a staff fragment, and when he puts his hand on it, he quickly removes it because it gave him a shock, and he ended up with a curse on his arm that made something happen, which Teresa had to cover her mouth to avoid dying of laughter. That seemed like one of those jokes where guys throw a $100 bill on the ground and when the guy goes to pick it up, he gets a shock or he just ends up fishing the bill back. So let's go because now at the entrance of the test tower, there are journalists waiting because the stalker passed by here and said that the subjugation of the ruin will end soon. Until the screen appears saying that the ruin has been completed, and people start coming out of the portal all worn out with a bunch of reporters taking non-stop photos. And when it comes to the scaredy cat captain, the guy looks like the rock in a muscleless form while people ask for blessings on his bald head. Bless you, Baldy. And look, even the journalist cried, and now all the attention was on Teresa saying that it wasn't the scaredy cat who completed the ruins, and that it was this masked man who completed everything alone. Then it was photo after photo, but now we're on the next day at home with the protagonist making that respectable ramen while browsing the internet because there are lots of articles about him, the unknown masked man. So he ate the ramen and now he grabs the ring to talk to the vampire, but she doesn't want to talk because she's nervous inside, Jin Hyuk just took the ring with that face and starts shaking it all over asking if she's feeling better now, but she's still stressed out. Then he spins it going up and down like a tornado until 3 hours later Alice is asking for mercy. So the protagonist injects magic power into the ring and she comes out wanting revenge, but when she stops to see, she's very small, not even reaching the protagonist's waist, because the scoundrel materialized only a part of the sealed power, so this would be the miniature version of Alice that can't even use 1% of the true power. But even with this restriction, the small one is still strong, but he says that what he said in the ruin wasn't a lie. Afterwards, while the woman is crying, the scoundrel keeps saying that he'll help her achieve the freedom she desires, but he'll only do so if she helps him. So, if she assists him, Jin Hyuk will eliminate all those who betrayed her and regain the position of leader of the Ataraxia family. 
A few hours later, a new video was sent to the Hall of Fame, featuring the protagonist facing off against all the vampires at once, and people were thoroughly impressed in the comments. Later, we arrive at a massive building. Then Jin Hyuk puts on the mask and kicks the wall because we don't know where the door is. And inside, it's full of men in suits, so the protagonist is going to ignite the fire because he's going to knock them out with punches to the mouth. Now, it showed the rooftop of the building with the boss arguing with a guy who was in a very strange position upside down, that's because he screwed up activating the guardians in the ruin and messing up the guild's reputation. But the main reason is that he couldn't send Jin Hyuk to the grave because this was the Black Crow Guild that he had humiliated before. Four. But at that moment, the walls started to explode because the masked copycat arrived making his grand entrance asking who's the leader of this place. And the guy who was doing a handstand goes up wanting to impress his boss, but Jin Hyuk just takes off the mask and slaps the guy who falls on the other side. And now let's sit down while the guild leader is angry pulling out his gun. Then he comes forward with his mighty mustache, but Jin Hyuk cuts his sword in half with a coin. He just puts his foot on the table because now they're going to have a little discussion, and the guy is still saying that he did all this just to get revenge because they tried to kill him thinking it was nothing. But of course, you have to do that and a little more, right, because the protagonist starts throwing coins at the man's face, who falls to the ground with his face all bruised. And look at the audacity of the extra trying to threaten Jin Hyuk by saying that the guild guys will hunt him down. But that's not quite how it works with our thief because he's just going to grab more coins and ignite the fire because he's going to trade in the same coin for what he said, which left the man with the mustache desperate. And then it was just one fiery coin that sent the mustache guy plummeting down the building, putting an end to him. So Jin Hyuk walks over to the guard on the ground and says the only reason he's alive is because of his sister, understand? And now he tells the other guard, who's pretending to be dead, to get up because here you don't hide anything, and jokes about our mighty one, can't even steal his Wi-Fi. So he gets up with Jin Hyuk ordering the young man to introduce himself, he says he's Kim Hee Wook, 26 years old, and handles the guild's general affairs. In other words, summarizing, he's the famous jack of all trades and then some. Jin Hyuk was interested, and since the situation isn't the best, it would be a waste to end one of the biggest guilds, so the protagonist will let the management fall to the guard with glasses, but it's just to keep up appearances. But even if he serves as the master, no one will want to follow him. The guys will hunt down the guard with glasses. And that's where Jin Hyuk has an ace up his sleeve. And sometime later, the guard with glasses sends a message to everyone in the guild that all rank A or higher players should stop what they're doing and come to an emergency meeting at the guild. So the guys all come pushed until in front of the building it's crowded with people around the car, and when one of them gets close, it turns out it was the mustached man who fell from the building onto the car, and it was confirmed that he went to the grave right there. So the scarred man runs into the destroyed building, and back there the guard with glasses is in the boss's chair. Then the guy starts grabbing his spear and pulling his tie while the guard with glasses is saying that the new consignees have arrived, and when he looks back, it's Alice all annoyed. So the scarred man starts complaining that a child caused all this, but talking about a child was not a good thing. The protagonist just saw the building exploding from outside in the stands. Later, it showed that the awakened test results are ready. So we're at the awakened association, and Jin Hyuk enters all cool saying now it's time to monopolize everything and in the end, we got the rank F certificate. And in front, we meet our protagonist's group, but now there are two new people, Alice, a player from Europe, and the guard with glasses who will manage the guild that Jin Hyuk managed to get in the conversation. So even though he's the master in name, the protagonist is the true master, and people have already started talking together in the corner, while Jin Hyuk is arguing with Alice because she blew up the building after being called a child. And now Jin Hyuk is going hunting and is going to call Alice because he's going after a horde, but the question is if there's any left since the best dungeons are being controlled by the guilds. So there's no other hunting ground, at least that's what everyone thinks, of course everyone except him. Now we've reached Moon Lake, on the first floor, which is known for being the most beautiful place. But there's that famous saying that the more beautiful it is, the bigger the thorn. And so here there are 12 statues controlling Moon Lake, and among them is this statue that has another purpose besides controlling the lake. The vampire asks if there's any hidden button, but that would be kind of obvious. So it showed that in the past nobody could find out how to open this because the key to do so is not just a piece of metal but rather the moonlight. That's why Jin Hyuk uses the palm of his hand to adjust the angle with the moon until finally it works and a passage starts opening under the ground. So Jin Hyuk and Vampire Alice enter the underground of the first floor, 
and he even takes the opportunity to mock the woman. Then Jin Hyuk starts descending using the blessing of the stars and the frozen tear which increases magical power by 18, and now it's only 24 hours from now to use this. The protagonist wonders what the monsters in this tower think of the players. Do they always think humans have been here? And Jin Hyuk tries to ask Alice, but the system itself censors him when he tries to speak. So, talking about the tower to the beings here is not allowed. And now Alice realizes something is coming, and Jin Hyuk starts sending his fireball upwards and opening that smile because here the monsters come infinitely from the abyss, and that's why a crowd of bizarre monsters is coming towards them, which makes the vampire feel disgusted, while the protagonist activates the blessing of the stars, reducing the physical defense of the monsters by 30%, and now it's up to grumpy Alice to finish them off. So she uses blood connection bringing everyone up, and Jin Hyuk activates the rift and passes cutting everyone in front of him. And then there was that flood of you leveled up, because now he doesn't need to stay at level 1 like before. And so here underground is an XP factory that the scoundrel takes advantage of. Until we went to another corner, in the conference hall of the Olympus Guild, where the guys are talking about the 8th raid to reach the 4th floor failed and among the 15 forces of 100 people only 9 managed to return, even though the boss on the 3rd floor is nothing special, but the problem is that he commands an army of a hundred thousand statues, and the man with the strange eye was already angry, while the representative of the Olympus Guild says they haven't had enough time to evolve yet. And look who else is here, our blonde Teresa, and this time she's all dressed up in a suit. So the white-haired one agrees but keeps needling the guild of the guy with the strange eye for monopolizing the magic crystals. Then there was a commotion in the middle of the meeting until the second question came, because yesterday they received news from the demon humans saying they would help them if they met one of their conditions. That's when the confusion escalates even more because because the guys aren't even willing, while Teresa back there is just observing, until some fireworks come and a hooded old man appears saying they know they won't be able to do this with just their strength, and this guy was one of the demon humans, and that's why the white-haired one and the strange-eyed one are already preparing to go up, but the guy comes talking to them to join forces because he has the power necessary to defeat the boss on the third floor. So he activates the ability Black Toon Lair, from where a bunch of skeletons emerge from the ground. But that wouldn't be enough, but the thing is he has the Staff of Greed, which judging by the guy's reaction must be something really powerful, and that's why they're starting to agree with the old man. Until Teresa is there thinking they're crazy, then she thinks if Jin Hyuk were here they wouldn't be in this situation. But at that moment a call request comes to her, and the scoundrel who was calling was none other than our protagonist scoundrel, the one that in the future everyone at this table will fear. Jin Hyuk was calling Teresa in the middle of the commotion, asking if she was okay. He must have imagined everything because he's asking what's going on in the background. And at the same time, the video call changes to a press conference. Jin Hyuk's face appears for everyone, but now he's wearing a mask. The guys there are all surprised because this was the super rookie they wanted to find. Even the redhead smiled. Meanwhile, the old man in the hood asks if he knows that this boss raid is completely different from Ruins, but can they defeat it? The old man keeps saying that with the summons, success was guaranteed, and even the leaders already agreed. But not Jin Hyuk. He's saying that he couldn't do it with a fake staff like that. Now the guy has a bionic eye from a distance, it seems. He says he made the staff using the heart of the saint and the prison uniform anointed with the sacred eye. So this thing is more fake than anything because it's impossible to create the real staff with materials from up to the third floor. And if you look from the outside, the skeletons are all falling apart and won't last even half a day with the boss. So the old man's plan was to abandon the guilds and then take everything amidst the confusion. Then Jin Hyuk ruined the old man's image, who gets all serious, looking like he's going to attack. But he leaves, saying he'll keep an eye on them. But now what? Because the guy's chance is gone. But Jin Hyuk says to leave it to him, so they won't need to join the guy in the hood and will still earn the profits from the tower's completion. But the protagonist is going to do this alone. The guys even smile and start flattering Jin Hyuk, saying they'll give him all the help he needs. However, he doesn't need any of that. The only thing he wants is for the guilds to block all entrances so no hunters can enter, because he's going in alone. Then the guys get confused because he doesn't want money or power. So what does this guy want? The protagonist says there's no reason, he's just doing what needs to be done for his precious companion. Then it happened, even Teresa blushed. And if she blushed, you know, guys, let's go. And now the white-haired one is shouting with this perfect camaraderie. Actually, it even seemed like my reaction watching this. The mood was good while the screen was being recorded and Teresa is waving goodbye to Jin Hyuk. But behind the mask, you can imagine, right? The guy is making crazy plans because giving up the rewards now is enough to gain something bigger in the future. And now we're at level 12 in less than a day in our automatic XP farm, with the vampire complaining that he left everything to her while he was chatting. But since she still has the strength to complain, she's not going to die. She is there crying, saying that this is a slavery contract. 
Then the protagonist says he will buy a mana supplement, but she says that won't work because a mere supplement won't fill her mana, and since her mana is low, she won't be able to help, and that's why now it's time for the sucking. Hold on, chomp, in the end, the protagonist was sucked through a tooth straw, so now let's go shopping. Jin Hyuk bought a bunch of useless things, from sticky grass to spider webs, but as we know, all of this has a purpose for making something. Therefore, from now on, we're going to be very busy because they have to reach the end of the first basement floor today. So, there goes the protagonist and Alice jumping headfirst. He's going so smoothly because he's jumped this more than 100 times in the game. Upon reaching the end, he activates reverse gravity, which only gives a glide. But at the same time they arrive, Alice notices something. And Jin Hyuk just lights the torch while they are surrounded by insects everywhere. And back there is the dog that roams the desert, Anubis. Anubis says he was planning to have some fun since he was the first human to get there, but the protagonist ended up coming down too fast. But while he's talking, Jin Hyuk wants less dialogue and more face punching. But the dog doesn't like it and stands up, saying that a god wouldn't fight directly against him. And the vampire is even trembling, while Jin Hyuk is just in the trust and lets go. Because the dog activated the skilled judgment of Anubis, which activates after the target answers three questions. The conditions for copying this thing were to destroy the vessel containing Anubis consciousness and make him lose his patience. Well, losing patience is what Jin Hyuk does best. So Anubis asks the first question, which was if he heard about him from the vampire he brought here. The protagonist confirms. Next, he asks if he's after the hive, and his answer was that it could be sold for a high price on the black market. The last question was if he really thought he could leave after stepping into Anubis territory. Jin Hyuk says that if he couldn't at least do that, he might as well give up on everything. The conditions were met, and Judgment of Anubis was activated, starting with the protagonist having all attributes reduced by 50% in common and innate abilities sealed for one minute. Anubis then selects the first champion to fight against the protagonist, the giant dark mode Mantis. The protagonist, unfazed, summons a music box that plays a specific song and cannot be destroyed until the music finishes playing, because now it's time to dance while the Mantis comes at him. Following the rhythm of this music, the protagonist is dodging everything because the beats of the music are aligned with the skinny one's attack pattern. And this, Jin Hyuk discovered after more than 100 times falling here. Now, a minute has passed, and everything is unsealed. So Jin Hyuk activates the Tomb of Swords and slashes at the Mantis. But the problem is that it can regenerate as many times as it wants, and because of that, the cunning plan is to make it not want to be alive. And then it was just slashes everywhere. The monster regenerates, and Jin Hyuk cuts, while the vampire is watching, blushing, already falling for the man. Now let's see who wins, are Jin Hyuk and Teresa or the vampire? What do you think? After so many cuts, the mantis is on the ground, finished, and Jin Hyuk takes the opportunity to sit with his but on its head. The creature couldn't withstand so much trial and killed itself. In the end, the protagonist defeated the first challenge and obtained the book, The Magic Castle of the Duchy of Pelterus, which will allow him to use ice magic. So, the rascal just opens it and gives it a quick read. In less than 10 seconds, he's already using the ice fold skill. Even Anubis realized that this guy is not normal. And the protagonist, mocking, says that he can't even defend himself and still wants to say something. Then Anubis asks why he came to fight, knowing that he's just a consciousness. And Jin Hyuk says it's just for fun. The monster gets pissed and sends the dogs at him, but actually, it was a swarm of bees. Jin Hyuk goes smoothly, shooting ice at the bees. Now the rascal decided to combine the two abilities, the fire element and ice fold, which gave the skill daylight, rank AA. The protagonist starts unleashing power, tearing everything apart, so much so that even Anubis decided to change his strategy. Yes, now this Anubis activated the power chosen target. The hive summoned a strengthened entity, which was a large pitbull style bee, and Jin Hyuk just used ice fold, sending the monster away. But the problem with chosen targets is that every time they die, they multiply. So, it was a rain of bees coming down on the protagonist, who was already prepared for this. That's why he took a giant pill and threw it into the bee's mouth, hitting the mark. And now he just jumped on them until he mounted that bee since the pill's effects would activate in one minute. Meanwhile, let's go with the bat bee attack. The protagonist, in reality, made the bee his ride, and Anubis went crazy seeing such a thing. Jin Hyuk is speeding along with his bat bee being chased by the swarm, until he uses the unknown cube, trapping them inside, and then he uses those things he bought in combination. And then, just to give the final touch, he activated the fire element, causing an explosion inside while the pill activated. Because of this, the bees are dying and dropping giant pills. 
Jin Hyuk actually created a giant pill factory because if he wants to face the boss of the third floor who commands an army, he needs to have something of equal stature to match him. So, as the bees multiply after dying, we're just filling our pockets, while Anubis doesn't even understand what's happening, until he concludes that this was all planned from the start. Therefore, Anubis destroyed the hive to stop more bees from coming out, just when things were getting fun. But Anubis said that this is disrespectful and that it would be better for Jin Hyuk to climb this tower and survive because he himself will cast judgment on Jin Hyuk when the time comes. Thus, the vessel of Anubis was destroyed, and the conditions were met. Jin Hyuk received the judgment of Anubis, which is that thing Anubis used with the three questions, reducing attributes by 50% and preventing the use of abilities for one minute. But, if he abuses this ability, the punishment of the gods might fall upon him. Now even the gods have expressed hostility towards him. At the end of this game with Anubis, Jin Hyuk is already at level 19 in less than a day. He adjusts his attributes until he receives a video call. This time it was the sore loser calling, asking where Jin Hyuk was. But the cheeky one says it's none of his business. Then Yu Sung says he has a proposal to make. According to him, in 24 hours, the association will host a martial arts tournament for players ranked AA and above. He wants Jin Hyuk to participate in the tournament with him for another fight. But this doesn't interest Jin Hyuk because it's a waste of time. However, Yu Sung makes his master move by offering an invitation ticket to the black market, a secret auction house used only by wealthy members, where they can buy powerful items with money. Now, that video Jin Hyuk sent was chosen as a highlight, the one where he recorded himself making the deal to solo the third floor boss in exchange for nothing. He only cut the parts where the old man in the hood appears. The comments exploded while the video already has 50 million views. Since he receives 100 coins for every 10,000 views, 50 million equals 500,000 coins. Even after taxes, it's still a good number of coins. Jin Hyuk is totally bored, yawning, and wondering when this damn tournament will end. But the guys are still fighting up front. Wasn't this supposed to be a martial arts tournament? Why are they even using magic? It ruins the fun of the game, doesn't it? They need to go back to Dragon Ball to learn how to hold a tournament. Besides, the guys are also filming to show they mean business. So Jin Hyuk remembers that he will receive Yu Sun's invitation if he agrees to fight him. He even tries to excuse himself by saying he doesn't have the rank, but Yu Sun says that the champion gets two choices, choose one of the divine relics or the chance to name a player who didn't participate in the tournament, who would be some lucky person in the audience. He also makes sure to say he will defeat Jin Hyuk in front of everyone. So, the smashing is happening in the arena. And look, even the old fireball guy in Yuri appeared, while the guys in suits are saying they are powerful. But this white-haired guy, who is the CEO of the Black Cloud Guild, Rank S, says he only has eyes for one person, Are you sung in the arena, who had previously refused to join his guild. At this moment, the guy with glasses arrives, saying that if he were there, it would already be over. Over with him getting beaten up, right? Let's cut to the battle with Yu Sung slashing everyone and being the champion of the martial arts tournament. In the interview, he says he will choose his opponent instead of the relic. Then, he looks up, pointing his sword. Even the guy with glasses gets happy, thinking it was him. But in fact, it was the one up there, our Jin Hyuk. The journalists look around and find out that he's a rank F. Everyone is confused, while Jin Hyuk just jumps into the arena, saying that Yu Sung needs to learn how to give up. But this time, Yu Sung guarantees he will win. So, let's see, right? The protagonist comments that Yu Sung has gotten a bit stronger and then activates everything against Jin Hyuk, using his soul catching sword strike too. And Jin Hyuk just thinks, here we go again. Yu Sung comes charging in while Jin Hyuk uses the fire element. Then the author, feeling lazy, shows just those 5 seconds later with Yu Sung on the ground again, while Jin Hyuk goes to get the invitation to the black market. Everyone is amazed that a rank F defeated the tournament champion. Now, Jin Hyuk meets with the old man and Yuri, who are a bit shy since this is their first meeting since the museum. Jin Hyuk says they should give him their phone, no, not the phone, but the number so he can add them on WhatsApp, but only if they want to. But you know, if you refuse, you have to deal with the consequences. Yuri changes her mind immediately and gives him the number. There you go, folks, the foolproof tip for asking a woman for her number. Just show up with that tough guy look and ask for her number. She won't even run off calling the police, trust me. Now, the next trouble is approaching, as the guy with glasses jumps into the arena. Jin Hyuk uses the Eye of Truth and sees that he's quite reasonable. Of course, the copy conditions appear, discover the evil plans he has in mind to copy the giant's grip. He thinks the system knows too much. So, the guy arrives, saying he didn't come to fight but to say some nice words and invites Jin Hyuk to shake hands. That gave away his plan because, using the Eye of Truth, the protagonist realized he just wants to defeat the winner to draw all the attention to himself. The conditions were met, and the protagonist gained the giant's grip, rank B. 
Jin Hyuk thinks that when this was a game, he didn't have many chances, but now that the game has become reality, everyone's abilities are just waiting to be collected by him. Then the guy goes to shake hands, inviting Jin Hyuk to join the guild. But Jin Hyuk shakes the guy's hand, using everything, but he doesn't move an inch and uses Anubis judgment, bringing the guy to his knees in front of everyone, screaming in pain. Then he comes at him with the other hand, and Jin Hyuk just slams the guy down. The guild leader arrives, furious, breaking everything, saying he worked hard for this moment. Using the Eye of Truth, it's clear the guy is strong, but the copy conditions would be to destroy his pride to copy the unique ability, Blood Demon Chi. Jin Hyuk suggests dropping the fight. The guy freaks out, claiming Jin Hyuk is chickening out, but Jin Hyuk simply doesn't want to destroy a guild master right now. The guy, driven by rage, charges using the Blood Demon Chi. Jin Hyuk just uses Daylight, summoning the dagger, and confronts the guy, who was sweating bullets, even though he had faced the second floor boss head on. Meanwhile, Jin Hyuk withstands it effortlessly until a voice commands them to stop, using an ability that paralyzes the guy. The one using this ability was the aloof man, the president of the Awakened Association. The guild master goes under the president's wing, saying he arrived just in time because this man beat up a player from his guild. But the aloof man doesn't care and says this isn't a talent show, so it's obvious there would be injuries. After that, the guild master might as well cry in the shower. Then the president introduces himself to Jin Hyuk, saying he didn't know of his existence until 20 minutes ago when someone from the tournament called him about something unbelievable happening. Since it was very strange, he decided to check the test results. The same test Jin Hyuk took, where the examiner trembled, unable to speak. Because of this, congratulations on becoming Korea's 16th rank S. A swarm of reporters descends because these guys are like a sea of piranhas, the first one falls, and everyone goes together. In the midst of this, the white-haired guy is left speechless because this tournament was supposed to be the stage for the Black Cloud Guild, but Jin Hyuk stole the show. He even tries to grab a reporter to give a statement, but the reporter leaves him behind to go see Jin Hyuk. Meanwhile, the copy conditions were fulfilled, and Jin Hyuk pocketed another ability, appearing in all kinds of news as the new rank S. Since Jin Hyuk mentioned he was heading to Las Vegas, they arranged a first-class flight for him. These are the fine perks of being a high rank, unlike in other manawas where the characters hide their power instead of enjoying it like our Jin Hyuk. The plane takes off while he's eating that top-notch steak until the vampire pops into his thoughts, telling him to look at the guy up front. She says the aroma he exudes is quite unpleasant, so there must be something wrong with this guy since he's not a normal human. Jin Hyuk just uses the Eye of Truth and, by the copy conditions, sees that he is a demonic human, from the same group as the hooded old man. Then the blonde guy approaches, asking if Jin Hyuk is the new rank S player. The guy says it must be fate that they met there and invites Jin Hyuk for a drink. But the guy is too naive to pull this off with Jin Hyuk, who agrees just for fun to see how far he'll go. They chat, drinking that quality cognac, each smiling more than the other. Then the blonde guy says the real reason he went to Korea was to expand businesses related to the Awakened, but he has a small problem. He asks Jin Hyuk if he knows the masked guy. And the fool says yes since he declared he would solo the third floor. The guy says he was going to join the third floor raid before that, but the masked guy told them not to interfere because he needed to do something there. Jin Hyuk casually asks if he knows the masked guy personally, and the guy still agrees. He got caught in the act, telling such a story to Jin Hyuk, who just continues playing along while the guy invites him to the third floor boss room. Jin Hyuk keeps feeding the rope. The blonde says he is a rank S and can act on his own, and besides, he could also obtain a secret item in the boss room. Then, it can't get any more meme-worthy, or maybe it can, because the guy claims he's a businessman. He then pulls out the elixir of legends, which can cure any disease and regenerate a destroyed heart. Jin Hyuk is shocked that such a thing is in his hands. The guy says he'll give this elixir as an advance if Jin Hyuk signs the contract. Just by looking at the contract, it's clear something is off. So Jin Hyuk rejects it. The guy comes back with the usual sales pitch, saying he had high hopes for him. He's taking the elixir back, but oops. Jin Hyuk already snatched it and says he's cautious but also greedy, and he needs to have everything he wants. Then he breaks the guy in half because the spell backfired on the sorcerer. Jin Hyuk uses some power that shakes the whole plane. The captain tells everyone to return to their seats. Jin Hyuk goes on, saying he's a good actor, while the guy finally realizes that he knew everything from the start. He tries to threaten, saying the masked man will get him. But how is he going to get him if he's already here? But, of course, he doesn't say that. He just leaves, asking if they are on the masked man's side even after being humiliated on Olympus by him. So, until next time, my dear friend, because we're in Las Vegas, the land of chaos and casinos, and that's where we're heading along with the vampire. But with his current mana, she can only stay within 150 centimeters of him. So he uses the memory of the world, merging the eye of truth with the blood demon Chi. 
This grants the ability Eye of Gluttony rank SSS, which is a superior version of the Eye of Truth because it can see through any barrier to view attributes and, additionally, can use shared vision and mind reading, which can be used on targets with levels lower than his. However, the Blood Demon Chi increases the chance of him being corrupted. Now we arrive at the Casino Universe, which is all fancy. But this is just a regular casino, and we're heading to an even better place. So they keep walking until... Now we arrive at the home of the Swindlers, Tortuga Casino, which the vampire found a bit tacky. But as we enter, we see a guy getting beaten at the door, claiming someone cheated him. And that's why this is the best casino we could be at, because here it's guaranteed Jin Hyuk will make easy money, since anything goes here. So Jin Hyuk seats the vampire and tells the bartender to serve her whatever she wants, because now it's time to make money. He goes to the first table and starts playing. It's that game whose name I don't know, but it must be one of those two. Then the guy says he'll raise the stakes, and Jin Hyuk keeps adding 5 million chips. But at this point, he starts asking the guy various questions. You can already guess he's going to use that thing, the judgment of Anubis. The guy makes his move, but when he turns his cards, it's a pair of jacks, even though he was sure he had replaced it with his ability. According to Father Google, this guy is in big trouble. After this research, I'm already heading straight to the casino to make some money too. But wait, I'm not Jin Hyuk. Ah, never mind, let's continue here because Jin Hyuk outsmarted everyone and won with a pair of kings. Then some muscle-bound guys arrive, saying he needs to come with them. And now you can already guess where this is going because nowadays Jin Hyuk isn't the one looking for trouble, trouble finds him. The extra is already itching for a fight because Jin Hyuk won a fortune by tricking people. Jin Hyuk asks if this is how they treat their customers. And the redhead says that people who take money from them aren't customers. But then, what does the guy want? A beating handed to him or from behind? Because Jin Hyuk just flashes that smile and throws the muscle-bound guy. While he says he heard from outside that only idiots get tricked here. So it's time to turn everyone here into idiots with punches to the face. The first guy starts shooting, and Jin Hyuk just slams his face into the ground. While the vampire is enjoying the drinks, Jin Hyuk is back there wrecking everyone. The redhead asks if the executives have arrived, and the guy says it will take at least 30 minutes. So they're screwed because Jin Hyuk is destroying everyone. The guard calls the redhead to see something, which was the article about Jin Hyuk being approved as the new rank S of Korea. Now the guys are scared, because even in the United States there are only 20 rank S's. So if Jin Hyuk wants, he can destroy the entire casino alone. The guy tells everyone to stop and starts kneeling, apologizing for the lack of respect. While Jin Hyuk is giving that good old excuse, saying this is absurd. And because of that, he'll have to take the money he won, plus compensation for the mental damage they caused by trying to kill him. So in total, let's call it 10 million dollars or, if they prefer, they can close the doors today. Jin Hyuk pressures them and takes the 10 million home, since he'll need that money to spend at the auction. Now the car that will take him to the auction has arrived, and inside everything is covered so people won't find out where it is. So, Jin Hyuk arrived, and the vampire was already eager to leave the ring. She left saying that this place is indeed worthy of a noblewoman like her. They enter the auction house, where some people are chatting, while the vampire smells that bad smell again. Upon investigation, it turns out to be the hooded old man. The blonde guy ran to call the boss, but it seems the situation turned sour for him, as he got a good beating for losing the elixir. Jin Hyuk uses the eye of gluttony and sees that the old man is powerful in necromancy. The conditions to copy the ability are completing education in dark magic and receiving an A+. But this is a somewhat difficult condition to fulfill. Jin Hyuk taunts, saying he received something valuable, and now the old man wants information about the masked one. Jin Hyuk says to discuss this another time and starts to leave, but the guy says unfortunately there won't be another time. Jin Hyuk brushes it off, saying it's not his problem. They are leaving while the vampire is excited, asking if she can wipe them out, but now is not a good time, as they need to buy some things at the auction. The black market auction begins, and the first item is a meteor that fell in the state of Arizona. Currently, no artisan can work with meteoric iron, so this is a good time to buy cheap. Jin Hyuk turns economist and bids 300,000. Immediately, the hooded old man bids a million dollars. Their plan is obviously to buy everything Jin Hyuk wants. Thinking about it, Jin Hyuk can make him spend a fortune and then steal everything from him later, as he always does. The bidding continues, Jin Hyuk bids, and the old man raises. The next item was found in the Mayan civilization. Jin Hyuk bid 500,000 without even hearing the rest because he has a plan. Immediately, the old man raises. Jin Hyuk keeps raising until he makes the old man pay 3 million. The scoundrel continued to do this for a few more rounds, making the old man spend a lot of money. Even the blonde guy asked if it wasn't better to stop, but the old man said he would get all the items Jin Hyuk wants and try to negotiate in exchange for information. The next item is the first chessboard. 
Jin Hyuk already made his bid, and the old man keeps raising. It continued until Jin Hyuk offered 10 million, which was all the money. The old man immediately puts 30 million on the table, already excited, saying Jin Hyuk will have to kneel if he wants that item. At this point, the vampire stands up offering 100 million. The old man is stunned as she tells Jin Hyuk that's how it's done. The old man raises to 110 million. She puts 200 million on the table. The old man resorts to saying she probably doesn't have these 200 million, while the auctioneer asks her to show some proof of her finances. She just opens a hole in the middle of the deal, and a bunch of gold coins falls out. Just one crown that the dude picked up to look at was worth 500 million. In the end, the vampire had everyone kneeling at the auction, and even Jin Hyu clapped for her. Now the hooded old man stands up and says they'll go with plan B. So, the blonde guy goes one way and the old man goes the other. Meanwhile, Jin Hyuk is getting the item with the vampire, until there's an explosion back there, and the blonde guy comes through, swiping at everyone. In the end, the extras are looking to be feasted on by Jin Hyuk, on top of having to deal with the vampire. So, Jin Hyuk arrives saying he's crossed the line. The blonde guy starts summoning a bunch of creatures, so, he's another disgusting necromancer. He comes at them with everything, and Jin Hyuk just dodges by pulling out his dagger, because they can't waste time in this fight. He activates the Cemetery of Swords and starts cutting everything, while the blonde guy comes all happy summoning another troop of creatures. That's the problem with fighting a necromancer, they make the opponent lose mana non-stop before attacking for real. But Jin Hyuk isn't playing around today. He says he'll burn them all before they're resurrected, so he uses the daylight. The blonde guy already has a plan in mind to separate the creatures before the rays, but when he tries to do that, everyone's feet are frozen. Jin Hyuk took advantage of the light to cast ice without anyone noticing, and now it's just an explosion towards the blonde guy, who's already on the ground while Jin Hyuk sweeps the monsters. The blonde guy tries to run, but it doesn't do much, since Jin Hyuk is good at aiming and sends a precise shot. He arrives saying that for the next 30 minutes blood will slowly fill his lungs, and as the blood accumulates, he'll suffocate to death. This must be the second most painful way to die after being burned. Jin Hyuk says he can end the suffering if he talks about the demonic society. The scoundrel, seeing the opportunity, tries to speak, but his throat doesn't work. So, he tries to write, but Jin Hyuk steps on the dude's hand, saying he has no choice since he doesn't want to speak. From the start, Jin Hyuk wasn't going to listen, it was all part of the plan. Jin Hyuk leaves while the blonde guy is dying. Further ahead, he sees those auction items lying around and starts combining everything and storing it in his pocket, just Jin Hyuk being Jin Hyuk. At this moment, the auctioneer appears thanking him for saving him and, about the items, lets Jin Hyuk take them because he saved the auction and the auctioneer's son. Jin Hyuk smoothly exits, looking for his next trouble. You can see who's the tough guy in the story. Now we come to the third floor of the test tower, where, without the X-Men, Cyclops and Jean came to do some work in the deep web soil. They're entering the Aversion Cathedral, in a heated discussion, until the big-nosed guy arrives saying they're comrades who survived for over 10 years, even though they're always trying to kill each other. That typical frenemy. The reason the big-nosed guy called them was because our Jin Hyuk appeared on the blacklist. But the girl doesn't care much about that because her bosses were known to have climbed up to the 20th floor. So, Cyclops says they have more experience because they're always in the tower, but they barely imagine that our Jin Hyuk was the lunatic who completed all the tower's floors. The masked guy knows he can't underestimate him. The mission is for both to follow the hooded old man. They both go along, until we cut to Jin Hyuk's friends training upstairs. After almost sending his buddy to base, he calls Yanawa over to see something, which is a video of the masked Jin Hyuk doing a live stream in the Temple of the Horned Trees, located on the third floor. If he answers all the tree's questions, he'll receive an item with a skill. The problem is that the questions are designed for no one to get them right. Jin Hyuk is in front of the tree about to ask his first question, she thought he was done for. In the end, the tree says that if he answers all the questions, he'll receive a type of maple leaf. If he answers at least one wrong, he's screwed. The first question was about the depth and temperature that the marine species Kelgorn can inhabit. The guys outside already see this isn't going to go well, but Jin Hyuk answers effortlessly. The tree moves on to the next question, which was easy for Jin Hyuk. In the end, he answered all the questions correctly. As promised, the tree gives him the maple leaves and asks Jin Hyuk to choose between red, yellow, and green. According to Mr. Tree, the red ones have a fire attribute, the yellow ones increase defense, and the green ones increase movement speed. Yanawa says she would choose the green ones to face the boss. But Jin Hyuk is lost in thought, seeming like those romantic comedies, but he wants the secret black leaves. That's when the tree gets a sour face because he knows about those but tries to dodge the offer. But with Jin Hyuk, these things don't work, 
and he threatens the tree until it hands over the black leaves. Unlike the others, the black leaves can be used on weapons and armor and have a special corruption effect that deals additional damage. That was the last piece of the puzzle. Now it's just about beating up the guards who came at them. Later, we're at the entrance of the third floor with guards guarding the passage, saying it'll be a piece of cake since no lunatic will come here. But, as they say, there's a lunatic for everything, so the hooded old man and his followers are invading at high speed, while Jin Hyuk is downstairs doing his live streams. People are pretty toxic in the comments, and he tells them to shut up. Whoever wants to watch can stay, whoever doesn't, can leave. Jin Hyuk is up to mischief today, but that's because he wants to show something different without sucking up to the audience. And, judging by the comments, it's working. He realizes someone's here, so he ends the live stream that had over a million viewers. At that moment, a crazy brawl starts between the hooded old man's followers and the statues. Jin Hyuk approaches and the guys turn to him, but he activates the blessing of the stars and passes through, taking everyone because of the divine power. They warn Pranoka that they lost Team 3. Jin Hyuk is souring his plans because each team is important for controlling the undead. If he loses more teams, the connection will break, and then it's straight to the hooded old man. But Jin Hyuk doesn't stop there. He rushes into Team 1 with a statue behind him, crushing the crazies. The hooded old man gets pissed, using the Guardian of the Pyramids, which, according to the guy, drains a lot of mana. This power summons his golden mummies, while the hooded old man is worn out just using it. He's draining the energy from the one who stayed behind because now he's going to face Jin Hyuk with everything he has. He sends out his strongest army, as they have both offensive and defensive abilities, which he was going to use to kill the boss. But Jin Hyuk is calmly approaching the hooded old man, sticking out his tongue. The duo Cyclops and Jean are back there, saying they haven't seen him this irritated in a long time. Since he's reached the point of using all his power, Cyclops says they won't need to enter this battle because it's guaranteed. But Jin Hyuk, as always, is smooth, remembering when he learned the sword arts of the Pendulum Spirit, which was to go smoothly like the wind and release strength at the right moment. Thus, with the help of the system, mastery with the skill increased tremendously. He's bringing the hooded old man to his knees with this magic vortex, which was the fifth nirvana movement of the pendulum spirit. Even using the double shield, the hooded old man was destroyed. He's trying to flee like a dog, but Jin Hyuk appears behind him, saying that when he sees he's going to lose, he starts running like a dog. So the blonde guy must have learned that from him because he did the same thing. The hooded old man realizes that the masked one was actually Jin Hyuk, but now it's too late because he's paying a visit to his disciple. Thus, Jin Hyuk sets everything on fire, ending the old hooded man once and for all. He leaves while taking his mana potions because the next challenge is right ahead, a bloke of the thousand arms. So let the battle begin, the statues come at him, and Jin Hyuk defends and cuts through them all. But just cutting them didn't solve the problem because the monsters get back up and summon the stone pagoda of enlightenment. But the pagoda went down the drain because the statue used the key in its chest, and it begins to react with the being beyond the portal, answering the call. So the guys aren't even in the fight yet and already ran off to call the boss, Avlok of the Thousand Arms. But folks, the video ends here, if you want to see more of our great ability copier, subscribe to the channel because I'll be waiting for you in the next video.